Welcome to Airheads, coming up. Shooting from the hip, we have pistol shooting tips. Ted is talking more sense, Jerry Moss is talking team tactics, and David is talking nonsense. First, Andy Crow's in a pigeon hide. Andy Crow knows a thing or two about pigeon shooting, but usually with a blunderbuss, not a precision instrument like a Walther air gun. We reckon he's the man to ask for tips for getting the birds close enough for an air rifle hunter either carrying out some pest control or simply craving a pigeon breast tossed salad for tea. My granddad said to me, as soon as you can uh, cock the air off, you can start using it. So I built my little old muscles up a bit quick and I soon learned how to cock it. And then he lent me, and I got some old decoys and I can remember it was one, one summer I was out and I set a load of decoys up on the edge of a water tank. They were coming here to get water um, at, the, at the top of the day and I had, had some good, good sport. So but yeah, you can have some good sport with air rifles, especially new air rifles you've got these days. Andy is setting this hideout for using the shotgun today. This is not where he'd be if he were just using the air rifle. If you've got a tree it's somewhere where they're feeding, I used to tend to get the, keep the decoys in close to the hedge, right in close, under a, uh, by a tree. So I see the decoy, instead of coming into the decoy, they go up in the tree. And that's where you've got a better chance of shooting them out of the tree. You've got more chance of shooting them out of a tree with an air rifle than on the ground. Because when they're on the ground, they're looking like that, ready to go. They're looking, if the decoys aren't right, they tend to fly away. But if you put, like I say, put them around close to the hedge, under the tree, so they see the decoy, maybe put one out or one or two out further but they see the decoys and they tend to draw to the tree as draw to the ground you've got more chance of shooting them out of the tree and that's what i found if you're away from a tree and it's in leaf you're looking into it you can't see hardly anything but if you're underneath it you've got more chance of seeing where they land and uh and seeing them to shoot them whereas a shotgun you want you want it to be fairly open so you can swing through over top and all round. you want all round visibility really the wood pigeons aren't getting a chance to land anywhere near our hide today. They're lucky if they get to fly over it, but Andy is letting the ferals or tamens drop in. They're not much sport for a proficient shotgun shooter, but they are for us with the Walter LGV in 177 with hawk scope on top. He now has a gun for every eventuality. are a great test of an air gunner's field craft, but should you be spending a lot on flappers and whirlies to have a successful outing? Just a few full body, that's all I do. And half a dozen full body decoys and just take them out. And as you shot a few, just decoy the same as you do, like I do with a shotgun. But you know, invest in a flapper, it, just a bit of movement, just to attract them in a bit. You want to camouflage yourself well, the air rifle, you've only got one pellet. And, it's not quite, not quite so easy. So concealment is a main thing, really. So a few decoys, a rifle, pellets, camo, and you're away as long as you've done your recce. Andy regularly gets more than 100 birds with the shotgun, but what about the air rifle? Did he ever need more than one tin of pellets? 20s, early 20s, blind in sport. That was on a bit of flat barley. I put some decoys out, it was just underneath a tree where it had gone flat, and. They were coming up in the tree and I was just shooting them out of the tree. And it was good fun. That was with a BSA air sporter, that was. Under lever. It was a really nice gun. Yeah, that had open sights on it. Didn't have a scope on it because I, I had to buy it myself. But when I was when I was a kid going out with my granddad and my uncle, when we was going night shooting, all we'd ever use was a an air rifle. Lamping at night. And uh, it's pretty common to get 100, 150 a night with it, so that's a lot of rabbits, that is. At the end of the day, we've got half a dozen ferals and a crow. We would have got a lot more had the air rifle not been playing second fiddle today. Now we have to work on prizing the shotgun out of Andy's hand so he can concentrate on pellets and not shot. Now from one disease spreading menace to another, it's David with hot air. This is hot air. A system to license air guns in Scotland will be a costly and bureaucratic mistake 
according to shooting organisations. Brought in as air gun crime has fallen by 75%, the Scottish Government's being led on this issue by Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill. There are thought to be 500,000 air weapons in the country and currently 60,000 people in Scotland hold firearms licences. If you're not doing so already, you need to shoot more grey squirrels. Public bodies including the Scottish Government, the Forestry Commission and DEFRA have produced a squirrel accord that wants us to get moving. Grey squirrels need controlling because of the economic, social and environmental damage they cause and their adverse impact on red squirrels, which are part of the natural heritage of the British Isles and they need protection. National Shooting Week gets going from the 24th to the 31st of May. With air guns included in the Commonwealth and Olympic Games and good funding for the sport from Sport England, organiser the Countryside Alliance says there's never been a better time to take up air gunning. Visit nationalshootingweek.co.uk Councillors in a city in Florida, USA, say that shooting rabbits with an air rifle is less evil than poisoning them. Under attack from a plague of rabbits, Mission Viejo's city council plans to look at drought-tolerant plants and rabbit-tolerant plants instead of killing them. And finally, how did the actors in the new X-Men movie let off steam between takes? Well, sources close to this news dump have filtered back intel from the set in Montreal. Apparently, the actors recharged their batteries with BB airgun shootouts with actors James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, the ringleaders. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you for that, David. Now, let's see what Ted has to say this week. What are you going to ask Ted this week? Super Ted, do you have an air gunning anthem? John Mellencamp, small town. Because even if I had a good day or a bad day, that song just makes me smile. USA! USA! Right, that's enough of that. Next, pistol shooting. And what's wrong with that? We've got the perfect stage for it. Ronnie Sunshines. Shooting a pistol accurately is not easy, but we have some tips to get you on target. In the first of our air pistol series, iron plate action shooting sharp shot Steve Taylor shows us the correct way to grip the pistol. There's a lot of ways to hold a pistol. There's a lot of bad ways to hold a pistol. This one, this one, this one. Best way to hold a semi-automatic firearm or anything in a semi-automatic shape is like this. Put your strong hand, around the grip with the web of your hand hard up against the grip safety or the area where the grip safety would be fingers around the front strap get your weak hand and work it in there onto the grip and then cant it forwards so that you're like that okay then you exert somewhere about 60 60 65 percent of the gripping strength of the grip with your left hand which then frees up the muscles in your strong hand to work the trigger okay if you over grip this hand the tendency is that this finger will also be tense and then you'll end up snatching the trigger okay in there like that thumbs forward and relax look at the sights fire the shot I prefer to shoot with my uh, arms slightly bent it gives you uh, a good grip on the pistol Good presentation to the target it doesn't over stretch the grip it's comfortable and it's repeatable and that's what we're going for here today for more information about the three on-site ranges or for the latest air rifles and pistols visit ronnie sunshines in berkhamsted hertfordshire or online shop ronniesunshines.com now there is no i in team but there is in squirrel it's air ranger
Working as a team, I think first and foremost is safety, uh, especially with the nature of the terrain we, we work in. Um, it's, it's good to have that second person to, to uh, watch your back and, and you can watch theirs. The other aspects from, from the hunting point of view is we remain in constant contact with the radios that we use. One person can be spotting, uh, one person can be using the FLIR, the thermal imaging cameras that we have. So you've got basically you know, double the sets of eyes that are, uh, are looking when you're stalking through the wood. I think there's also the aspect of, you know, you can, you can cover a wider area. So there's, there's the two of you, one can sit in one position, the other one can move up uh, 100, 200 yards to, an, to another area. Quite often it's, it's been the case where you'll be in your area and you'll see a, a grey squirrel heading towards where your teammate is. So um, you can radio him, just let him know there's a, a squirrel coming in from the left. So it has, has that aspect as well. There's always the banter side as well. It's nice <laughs> to have the company. Farting down the radios, for example. Um, uh, you've got to have a bit of fun. You've got to have a bit of fun, yeah. I mean, because sometimes you can be up here for hours, you know, two, three hours at a time. So it's, it's good just to, you know, have that bit of banter. The other thing that can happen when you are in a pair, you know, we've all experienced the squirrel disappearing up the tree. Yeah, that's it. Um, and, one. you know, even when with the thermal imaging, which can help you pinpoint it out, they can still be, you know, quite wily and, and keep moving in a position where you can't get the shot. So that second person is, is fantastic to, you know, one standing still one side of the tree and the other one actually moves um, to hopefully move it into a position where the other one can get the shot. If you're on your own, you know, where's there a stick, throw that round the other side, yeah. trying to get the squirrel to come round your side. Someone walks around, the squirrel will then come your side of the tree and that gives that person a chance of the shot, you know. Yeah, it can be very effective in pairs. You, well, you're covering double the ground. Do you actually like each other? No. No. Hate him. no. He smells. <laughs> Later in the show, we've got Air Gun World and Air Gunner technical editor Phil Price. First, you've heard of Quick Draw McGraw. Well, here's Slow Draw McDuff. It's James Martington. Well, what could be nicer? It's a glorious sunny day, it's the weekend, and I'm out in the woods with the air rifle. I'm trying out a new air rifle. This one is a BSA Scorpion SE. So far, I've been very impressed with it. It's a pre-charged pneumatic. This one's in 177 caliber. It looks good, handles well. It's certainly super accurate. I've shot some really nice groups with it while I'm zeroing, and I'm hopeful that it's going to prove to be a very good hunting rifle. The barrel is fully floating. It's just mounted into the receiver and then stands alone from the, the cylinder underneath. It has a 10-shot magazine. The stock has a nice high comb, nice high cheek piece, and it's ambidextrous, so you can, uh, you can put your cheek comfortably onto that, either right or left-handed. It's got a nice two-stage trigger, Good positive safety catch. Once you've filled the cylinder with air, you load this magazine with up to 10 pellets, slot it in here, lock it in by pressing that latch there, and then by operating the bolt, you can simply load a pellet and fire. And I fitted it with a BSA scope. This one's a, a three to nine power. Not a bad scope at all, that. It's got mill dots in the reticle, so that helps you uh, gauge, the, uh, gauge the holdover. It's got a, an illuminated reticle. You can adjust the, the brightness of the reticle on this knob here. I've done a lot of the hard work of setting up already. I've zeroed it for about 30 yards and I've now marked off the aim point for all the other distances that I'm likely to be hunting at. So it's performed very nicely in the back garden on some paper targets. Now I'm gonna go for a bit of a hunt and see how I get on with it in the field. When it's really hot and sunny like this, I find it's best not to go out across the fields where everything can see you and you get all hot and bothered. I like to stay in the woods, in the shade, in the cool, and it's a lot easier to sneak about without making a disturbance. You can stay in the shadows, just quietly walk from tree to tree, watching, waiting. It's amazing what you hear if you just stand still long enough and let things settle back to normal. There's a lot of bird song and it sounds quite loud when there's nothing else, but you can very easily hear a rabbit or a squirrel hopping about on the, on the woodland floor because the, the leaves and the twigs are really dry, so you can, they, make a, they make a terrible noise. It makes it harder for you to move around, of course, but you know, if you take it slowly and look where you're putting your feet, you can do all right. Of course, it's hard to see things with all the leaves on the trees and the long grass. 
There were several squirrels in the woods, but I just could not get a shot at them. They'd, they'd appear from behind a branch, and then next minute they've disappeared behind the leaves. You've lost them again. Nothing really you can do about that. If you get lucky, one will come out and sit where you can sit. If you don't, it doesn't. That's just hunting, I suppose. So I spent a very nice couple of hours sitting around in the woods, watching the wildlife. All sorts going on, lovely and peaceful. Nice way to relax. Didn't shoot anything though. By now my stomach's rumbling, it's time to go back, so I head back to the car, and would you believe it, there on the track is a wood pigeon. I managed to find a nice rest on a fence post, lined up the shot, and got him. So it certainly wasn't a wasted afternoon. It's been a glorious day, I've had a lovely afternoon in the woods, the BSA's proved its worth, and I've got a pigeon for dinner. Thank you, James. Now from one top shooting journalist to another, it's Airgun World and Airgunner technical editor, Phil Price. We get so many people ask us, how far away will my airgun kill a rabbit or a pigeon or whatever? Actually, the airgun is capable of much, much more than we are. We are the weak link in the chain. So we have a, a rule that says, if you want to know the distance you are capable of hunting at, you need to be able to group all your pellets on a target the size of a one pound coin. Now, maybe to begin, that's 10 yards. But once you're successfully putting them all in a one inch group, it becomes 15, 20, 25, 30, depending on your skill and how well your gun's set up and the quality of your pellets and that kind of thing. But keep that as your rule. Just practice, make sure you're getting all your pellets in a consistent group, all on something the size of an inch. That is now your maximum hunting distance. And maybe your challenge is to keep practicing and improving until you can add five yards to that. But don't forget, you need to practice in real world conditions. Out in the wind, with the rain and all the other things that can happen while you're out hunting, don't shoot from a bench on a range in perfect conditions where you're rested. Practice standing, kneeling, sitting and prone and you'll find your distance is actually different because offhand we're all a bit wobbly, we're prone, we're quite steady. But think about that one inch group. If you can shoot a group of one inch, that is your maximum hunting distance. Last but not least, we're air gunning all over the world. It's air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Mark Yaler sends me a link to his channel, which he calls a record of my weekly shooting adventures here in the Garden of England. And he is right. YouTube is a 21st century game book where you record your outings so that later, over whiskey with the dogs asleep by the fire, you can re-enjoy them and give pleasure to others. There was a flurry of brancher activity on YouTube last week. Even I tried to shoot them with an air gun, but on account of the branches, was defeated and had to turn to a shotgun. From field to stream TV, finds better air gun shots in his film Epic Rook Shooting Awesome Air Gun Action. Another two BSAs in this film, Vermin Hunters TV is showing off the new Night Sight Viper system, shooting rats at all ranges in and around pigs. More night vision out after rabbits this time. Holdover TV drops short on a shot or two, but hey, even if you have all the gear, you are still allowed to miss. Scott Wood offers clear footage of him on a still day out after rabbits. Let's Get Techie, a clever film here of four different H&N Hornet pellets filmed in slow motion as they go through apples, potatoes, plates, and metal sheeting, leaving impressive trails of destruction. Air Arms Hunting SA has put up a series of how-to videos, including this one, air rifle hunting tips and tricks, position, stance, and balance. And finally, it's over to the good old USA, where an easily excited American is reviewing the Benjamin Nitro Piston 2 and shooting a trophy turkey that has a whopping 12-inch beard. Click on the links to watch the videos, or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we're back in a couple of weeks, and I promise Roy will be here soon. He's still coaxing eggs out of his birds and bringing up young chicks. Please subscribe. Please go to our webpage. This has been Airheads.